What's up, y'all? Devon here again for Obligatory, bringing you the music news of this week, Friday, May 26, 2023. It's a pretty short news week, but we got some good and interesting stuff to talk about. But we have to start here with this very important question. Does he know? Do they know? And by they, we mean Fox News. Why are they playing 100 Gex over and over and over? Turns out the Chinese spy balloon scooped up more sensitive secrets than what Joe Biden told us about. Now, we're looking into this because of the article I'm going to show you on the screen. And we here at Obligatory really like 100 Gex. They're an awesome duo. They are a lot of things. A hyper pop, alt rock, ska punk. And we're saying this part quietly, an LGBTQ friendly band with a trans woman in the group. So of course, this begs the question, do they know? Because if they did, they probably wouldn't be playing it. This is mostly the doing of one Mr. Greg Gutfeld. One of the five on the five on at five weekdays on Fox News. Y'all might have seen the clip of him talking about 100 Gex as probably the best band, new band out right now. Now in the same clip, he shouts out a few more bands like Death Grips or Killing Joke or Mr. Bungle, which all of these made me think like, man, does he like listen to the lyrics when he's enjoying this music? Because the taste is pretty good. I just, the core values do not line up. Next up is Brockhampton finally releasing that infamous puppy album, spoiler alert, no. Now this is kind of two interesting stories in one to me. The first being that Amir Van, the member of the group who was originally in and then kicked out, has been off of social media for about a year and returned to Instagram to post a bunch of clips in kind of this documentary style. I would say most notably here, the original version of 1999 Wildfire makes an appearance. That's the track the band did with Jazzy Faye, and they released this track just without the original Amir verse. This is around the time that he was kicked out. It was after Saturation 3, but before they had officially pivoted to Iridescence and released that album. And previously, fans had heard snippets of that verse, but not the verse in its entirety. And not only did it have a lot of unreleased music in the mix, but also previously unseen footage of the band. Somehow this got parlayed into r slash Brockhampton and Brockhampton hardcore fans is getting bamboozled into thinking Puppy was going to be released or at least leaked today. I mean, it was a whole thing. There was a fake countdown. There was this fake announcement on the Brockhampton Discord channel. And fans really thought the album was going to get streamed or leaked today. Obviously, that didn't happen. And as you could imagine, r slash Brockhampton has been in shambles ever since. But just know the kind of copium that these Brockhampton fans we're really holding on to thinking that this project was gonna see the light of day. Today. This light of day. Today. Here's a great story I forgot to mention. The Alchemist did one of his every so often Twitter ask me anything sessions in which people ask him like, what's the next project coming out with? Who are you working with? Where's that secret Earl album? And in it, he got a question about the Vince Staples EP that he had previously uh, confirmed existed. They asked if it still was coming out. He said yes. If you remember this tweet from a couple of years ago, that's what he's referring to. Anyways, that's cool. We got no other information so far, but I know you and I want to hear that pretty badly. And maybe we get lucky and maybe it comes out this year. Who knows? Conway the Machine of Griselda Records is unfortunately postponing his upcoming tour, citing a severe leg injury, which includes a tibia fracture and a dislocated kneecap. The timing on this, it's unfortunate. This comes really soon after Westside Gun caught some heat for canceling his European tour just hours before it was slated to begin. And uh, obviously the circumstances are completely different here, but it sucks nonetheless. Now there's also kind of a second story here in relation to Conway in a recent interview he did on the My Expert Opinion podcast in which he kind of walked back and expressed some regret for some comments he made about his Griselda label situation and the terms of his contract with Griselda. He essentially chalked it up to having a selfish or an emotional moment and kind of reacting to what he understood the situation to be and wanted to make it clear that nobody owes him and the situation is not quite what he was thinking in that moment. Now, in a previous interview he did on The Breakfast Club, he admitted that he never read his shady Griselda contract and basically did that on the strength of his relationship with West Side Gun, assuming he'd be good. I think that's understandable, but I think we also all know that that's not necessarily good business practice, even when people do have your best heart and interest in mind. And, you know, it kind of seemed like maybe there was a small rift or here or there happening, but I think it's perfectly natural, normal, and exciting and healthy for these guys to be going on in their own 
individual paths and really building out their own lanes separate from the legacy they've built as a group. Another really interesting story here, Black Midi, the South London avant prog and experimental rock band, best known for their work like Hellfire and Cavalcade. They're going to be doing a Beatles cover concert for their set at La Guess Who Festival in Utrecht. And even more interesting, they are doing this at the behest of one Slossom Malone. Slossom Malone of Standing on the Corner. He will be curating the set. And so this will be happening in October, again, at La Guess Who Festival. If any of y'all are going to be in Utrecht around that time, pop in, go see it. It's probably going to be cool. I hope that there's good footage and good audio of this concert. Uh, and if that happens, you know, I will be letting you know about it here on this news channel. Little Nas X is going to be on the Eric Andre show. The Eric Andre show is returning to Adult Swim for its sixth season on June 4th. Adult Swim has teased the new season with this clip uh, from the Little Nas X interview. Okay. that presumably could be coming in the first episode. Now, Lil Nas is definitely known to do a little bit of memeing here, a little bit of trolling there. It's definitely a silly person. But is he ready to bird up with Eric Andre like that and match the chaos and cringe incarnate energy that he is on that show? I don't know. We will, that we will see soon. It's coming out soon, and I'm looking forward to it. And finally, I want to finish the news section here saying farewell to a few major music legends that passed away this week. First off, of course, rest in peace to Tina Turner, the queen of rock and roll. She passed away at her home, age 83, in Switzerland. She was not only one of the single best-selling recording artists of all time, but an actress, a 12-time Grammy winner, and the first black person and woman to grace the cover of Rolling Stone in their second issue. She leaves behind about as massive a legacy as one could hope to in this space of music and art. Andy Rourke, the bassist for the Smiths, passed away aged 59 from pancreatic cancer. He was one of the foundational members of the band. He was on all four of the Smiths' albums and continued to work with Morrissey after the group had broken up. He was also seen as the auxiliary or the secondary creative force for the band behind Morrissey. And the impact they've collectively all had on alternative of rock over the years is near immeasurable. And finally, Pete Brown, the British beat poet and lyricist, most well known for his work alongside the band Cream with Jack Bruce and Eric Clapton, has passed away at the age of 82 from cancer. A few legends this week alone, and in 2023 in general, it's been a tough year of losing some pretty legendary artists. All right, just to wrap things up here, I'm going to put some album announcements up on the screen. These are upcoming albums that are coming as soon as next week. I'm particularly excited about new albums from King Cruel, Janelle Monet. To my surprise, I'm very excited about this King Gizzard album coming out June 16th. It sounds like some Infest the Rat's Nest Part 2 type energy with the thrash metal thing going. New music this week is not too bad as far as albums go. I was excited about the Arlo Parks album that is out today. Lil Dirk dropped an album, AJJ dropped an album, and you know, there's a few more that I'm definitely going to check out. But this is the weekly news video. We also do a weekly new releases video in which Dominic breaks down all of the new music that came out and some of the stuff we are most paying attention to and excited about. Other than that, thank y'all again for watching another news show with us. I am Devon again here for Obligatory bringing y'all music news. And of course, we will see y'all next week with more news, more new releases, more community music journalism. Thanks y'all for watching. Peace out.